Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan. This is just a test screen to make sure that we can do a test. If this were a real emergency, then you would need a ambulance or, yeah, well, this, this is a thing. So up until a year ago, I've been an independent consultant for almost my entire career. And Rendition recruited me and managed to get me to join. And early on in the conversation with our CEO, Brandon McCrillis, was texting on the Slack, and there was something about an ambulance. And I was like, what, we have an ambulance? And he's like, what security company doesn't have an ambulance? So apparently we have an ambulance that actually exists in, a, in Augusta, Georgia, but it's not available for COVID-19. And I almost cut this entire slide because it feels too soon. But hey, here we are. That's, that's not available. So let's get on to the talk. And, and Jason wanted to know, how did this even happen? And so I'm happy to tell you. So that's the talk for this year, but here's the prologue. So it was, it was years ago when my very, no, nope, oops, not my very best friend in the world, my best man at my wedding, but my very best friend would be my wife. So my next very best friend in the world said, hey, we're having a conference. It's official. We're going to do this. And I said, yay, John, man, how can I help? And he said, you're a speaker. And that wasn't what I expected because the whole thing is explicitly a stunt hacking con. Uh, and I, I, can, I can hack boxes. It's cool. But I don't do stunt hacking. That's not my thing. Um, I'm kind of purple, more blue than red. And then I watched the speaker list grow laterally to the point where I was like, oh, my God, these people, these people, I can't stand next to them at a conference about hacking. Holy smokes, what to do? And that's it. Panic. I panicked. I panicked. And John's like, dude, I need an abstract and a title from you. And I'm like, well, here's my title. I have no idea what Relic did just there. Or alternately, for Network Forensic Geek invited to Hacker Conference for Comic Relief. And Strand thought either was a fun title, but either way. And then finally, in the first year, I was like, oh, it's fine, because there's two tracks. And the time, my time slot is the same as Egypt's time slot. So everyone will just go watch Egypt, and no one will come to my talk, and I'm fine either way, and it'll be fine. But people show up. I, I, don't, I don't like to do a lot of, of uh, who am I. Look, if you want to know who I am, just, you can just Google me. It's fine. The, the, quick, the, the quickest way I figured is just to say who am I. So in the ICU domain, I'm Jay Ham. In the rendition domain, I'm the threat hunting ops lead. In the SANS Institute domain, I'm a principal instructor. In the author domain, I'm part of the network forensics group wrote a book. And if I say, who am I slash priv, you can see I've taken some liberties with the privs. The SE debug privilege, understanding what Relic did just there when he riffed on some crazy obfuscated PowerShell. Nope, didn't understand that at all. Um, stun hacking, not me. Rocket surgery, impossible feats, not me. But I can see packets, and I can see bad guys, and I can do some blue team stuff. So there's that. This, is, this gets into the, the history of it. I'm, I'm, I'm blue. Sorry, red team conference. I'm, 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 I'm blue. I don't stunt hack. But maybe I can stunt hunt. Anyone want to watch that? I hope someone wants to watch that. So version one, this is the SEV3. So season one, version, 
or episode one. When when I finally decided that I had to give a talk at Wild West because I couldn't tell John no. I mean, when he says you have to be a speaker, it, it's like look, if he told me to go to South Dakota and wash his car. I'd want to know why, but I'd still have to go because, you know, besties and all that. So I, so I finally told him, here's what I want. I want your best geeks to get into the environment and do all the tricksiest things and just give me the packets. So I get a call back from one of the engineers at Black Hills. He says, hey, what do you want, a full campaign or whatever, and I just don't know. You do the tricksiest things that Black Hills engineers know how to do in the lab, whatever it is, and just send me the evil in the form of packets and let me hunt you. And I won't know what you did, but I gotta figure it out. So they gave me the traffic. I said, give me the give me the traffic from the switch, from the tap, whatever. They gave it to me. And I said, whatever. Bespoke malware. Yeah. Create new things. Do whatever you're gonna do and give it to me, right? And so back in 2017, I ran to ground patient zero. No content, just flow data. No content. I had full content, but I adhered to my desire to not use anything but flow data. And I still ran patient zero to ground. Nothing but TCP dump, snort, Z. That's it. So the sequel Apparently, I don't know. Threat hunting is a popular spectator sport. It's awesome. They asked me back to do a sequel, so I did. Seriously, I really still can see you. And I used more PCAPs because they sent me like seven of them. And I used two the first year and one the next year. And I figured that at least at some point, somebody at Black Hills had to be playing some LLNR games. So I ran that to ground two. That was fun. All the way, oh, by the way, uh, as you can see on the slide, I like the acronym MITM, but the first M doesn't stand for man because I have to be gender nonspecific. I, my, my, my wife's a hacker. She's awesome. I have girls. There, I I can't I can't be gender specific. Nor should anyone be. You shouldn't even have to have girls in your lives to not be gender non-specific. It could be a woman in the middle. It doesn't have to be a man in the middle. So I've redefined the first M as monkey in the middle. Cause what else are you gonna do in the middle but monkey with packets, right? So I think that makes it fairly gender non-specific. Monkey in the middle. I hope that catches on. Everyone, everyone, tweet it all out. Monkey in the middle, not man in the middle. Monkey in the middle, because what else are you going to do in the middle but monkey? Anyhow, I, I had a grand deal with the LLMNR and the WPAD stuff last year. Then this came. They asked if I would complete the trilogy of hunts and, and open the conference in Deadwood with it in October in 2019, which was, I, I thought that I'd been asked in error, but they said, no, they really wanted me to do that. But my situation had changed. So I'm now, I surrendered my independence. I am now at Rendition. You can see my logo, it's my fine logo. Uh, as a principal consultant and now officially the threat hunting operations lead at rendition. There it is. So I had this opportunity to think, okay, if I'm going to do another quick dirty hunt for another quick dirty talk, it might be fun to go head to head with notorious nation state adversary Jake Williams. And here's Here's, here's the asterisks there. First off, fun. I decided to do this, and I hadn't clearly thought it through because holy, holy shit. Really, I'm going up against Jake Williams, and you can read the double asterisk. I mean, if you don't know who Jake is, well, he's the founder of Rendition and notoriously 
ex-nation state operator. And I said, hey, Jay, why don't you create for me some C2 that's never existed in the world, and it's going to be my job for a talk to find you. Wow. Yeah. Bespoke malware. He built it, crafted, using a comms channel never used before, never seen before. And he gets back to me finally. He's like, okay, I built it. I built the thing. I'm pretty sure I've never seen this done before. I've never done this before. So it's custom crafted. But now we have to have a place to put the traffic, right? Because he built a tool to do the C2. But where to put it? And his first suggestion, I won't even say publicly, because I thought it might have required a CFAA violation for me to sample it. And so then we came up with some place as real as possible. We need some help. And Dale Hobbs came to the rescue. Thank you so much, Dale. So introducing Dale Hobbs, he's a friend of mine. He's a former student of mine. He's a former student of Black Hills. Uh, he's a former client of Black Hills and J. Hamcorp and also Rendition. And he went to his employer and said, hey, can we run this and capture this traffic for community use? Well, I can't, I can't make the PCAP available community-wide, but I can, but, but I, thanks to Dale, we're able to have a game. So I get a slice of a ginormous haystack of Dale's enterprise operations. He ran, J he ran Jake's tool in the, in the environment, in a very busy environment. A one-hour slice I get of the corporate traffic, it, full content PCAP, that's what I expected, anyhow. Yeah. And then Jake's buried in all the things doing all the things. Even on a Saturday morning, it was for a one-hour slice, five gigs of packet data. So I, I got a five-gig slice of a one-hour traffic with Jake in it. Now, mind you, I asked Jake, hey, when you built this, did you at least put like an Easter egg or something in there so I'd know it was you if I found you? Because, you know, Dale's, Dale's Enterprise is getting a free threat hunt. I mean, I'm, I'm hunting the threat on Dale's corporate network for an hour on Saturday. I'm like, man, free threat hunt. I may find something besides Jake. How do I know if I find Jake? I asked Jake, did you put an Easter egg in there so I know it's you instead of somebody else? He's like, no. I'm like, how do I know it's you? He's like, well, you know, if you think it's me, give me the IP address that's the endpoint of the C2, and then I'll tell you if it's me or not. Great. Anyhow, so we go, we go, we go. There's a needle in the haystack. Couldn't be more real because... Thankfully, there's no maliciousness going on on the inside asset other than it's running Jake C2. So there we go. All right. So the plan. Well, my plan last year, hold on. I got to I gotta move the window real quick so I can see all my slides. If anybody has a thing to say, text me at the end. Um, anyhow, so the plan, same as last year, all the analysis, just quick and dirty. Anything I can do, quick and dirty. Right? Oops. Got to click back here. Nothing beyond what's easily instrumented in a corporate network. Like, seriously, if you can download Security Onion, you couldn't do what I did because my platform for all of this was just stock Security Onion. By the way, Doug Burks, thank you, man. So I got a lot of net flow data, I got some traffic analysis, I got correlated transactions, I got snort. Oh, okay, so there's there is a bit of transactional content data that's snort looking, but mostly only whatever Doug put into Security Onion by default. Command line inspection, you're gonna see that. Nothing that can't be scripted. <laughs> well, 
In previous years, I did no full content inspection, but that's redacted, and no Wireshark and T-Shark is redacted, and no session reconstruction is redacted, because this year, I'm haunting Jake. So, I figure gloves off. I think that's fair. Except for this part, humble pie to start. So, if you see my previous talks in this forum, you're expecting a bunch of Clyde gone crazy. Yeah, we're getting to that. But here's the thing. Wow, how dumb am I? <laughs> Humble pie, hubris flavored, because here's the thing. So I thought that with nothing more than the traffic dump from Dale, because he, he said, I'll get you all the traffic in and out from the, from the Internet, I figured, oh, I'll be able to figure out the internal topology just from that point. That I wouldn't need to know what was behind it, that I would be able to figure it all out. Yeah. No. As it turns out, I'm not that smart. Maybe somebody is. Hey, Mike Poor, Dave Walter, challenge, uh, the Joe, Johannes Ulrich challenge, uh, challenging you guys, but man, um, I, I couldn't I couldn't figure out the internal topology from the choke point that I got, so I had to be told more about it. You can see on screen that's that's literally the the uh, the bar napkin that I started to try and scroll the scribble things out on. It 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 didn't work that well. So there's that, and that's not even half the story. Here's the half the story. So, me reading in my PCAP, that's a lot of packets for one hour. I mean, it's not, it's not the most thing. So, then I read in the PCAP, and if you're familiar with BPF language, I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling uh, TCP Dome to ignore the, uh, the high order two bits at byte offset 13 at TCP. Just in case there's some um, uh, ECN going on, that's the TCP 13 ampersand 0x3f equals 0x02. I'm looking for SINs, right? I'm looking for SINs, whether or not the ECN protocol is in use. And I'm looking at looking for them from source net one of the insides and not desknet one of the insides, and not desknet another one of the insides, because God knows what's going on, and I find, as you see, zero packets. So, look again. Same thing, ignoring the ECN in the first, in the first paragraph, or in first parentheses, desknet local, and not source net local, and not source net local, and, yeah, get packets. Anyone see what's happened here? If my source net and desk net networks are as had been illustrated on the napkin, which turned out finally to be correct, all I've got is inbound traffic. No outbound. I've got half duplex. So apparently there was a bit of an oopsie with the high availability load balancers. That five gig of traffic is half duplex. It's inbound only. I have a single outbound SIN segment beacon or no. Nothing outbound. I'm hunting Jake Williams doing C2 from the inside out, and I don't have a single SIN segment to see. Now, how real world is this? You can see on the screen. I got. I, I. I honestly, my first response was, "Jesus, really, Dale? Did you and Jake conspire to make it that much harder for me? Did you really do that on purpose, or do do I accept that maybe that was a boo boo?" In any case, I just got to chalk it up to the fact that you know what. Doing an investigation is hard, and the world doesn't care that you're seeking the truth. So there we have it. Never mind the gloves that I've shaken off to find Jake. I got one hand tied behind my back. Now at this point, I will say, I talked to Jake and I said, hey dude, man, here's what happened. 
I've got nothing but inbound. He's like, well, yeah, you should see my inbound C2 responses then. So you should be able to find me. And a one-hour window, then he's thinking, like, how often did I? Yeah, you should see me at least once in an hour, right? And then he's like, do you want hints? And I'm like, no, no, I don't want hints. No, no, Jake, no hints, because too proud. So not, not so proud. But by the time that I finally got the PCAP data from Dale, I had one week to hunt Jake and all that traffic. And meanwhile, during that week, I was teaching SANS Management 414, the longest boot camp course ever, which runs from 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. all week long, all days. No labs, neither. So I don't even get breaks for labs. It's just all lecture. So all I had was time in the evenings. If, if you're familiar with the CISSP, it's soul-crushing to even contemplate, let alone to lecture about all day, every day. And I'm just at the end of every day, I'm like, oh my god, what's the throughput of cat tree? And the, the bandwidth used by 802.11.b, no, 802.11b, it wouldn't be dot .b. God, I, I, I'm out of my freaking mind, and I'm trying to hunt Jake. So I said, I said this, I said to all my students, anybody want to come down to the bar and hang out and shoulder surf me while I'm looking? Help, help look for anything I'm missing and that, that, was, that was a really good experience. It was fun. Here was the general methodology of everything I've done in the past for this talk. And I know I'm like 20, 25 minutes into it, but you're going to see how it wraps. Typically, I'm going to do reconnaissance. I have to do the reconnaissance. The bad guys do the reconnaissance, so do I. If, if anyone on the blue team knows the blue screen, there it is. Look, if you don't think you have to do reconnaissance, Ponder, do you know perfectly the asset layout of your entire enterprise? Do you know all the things? What all the things are? What all the things run? Do you know that? As, as a consultant coming in, I don't know your environment until I get there. And it's going to take me a bit to figure it out. But even if it's your own environment, come on, do you really know it? Do you really know it? Reconnaissance, reconnaissance. Now, then I got to drill down on anomalous behavior. Maybe I think I know what might be anomalous, but do you know what's anomalous in your environment? How do you figure that out? You got to figure that out. And the last thing, timeline analysis of important events, right? So that's always going to be the thing. So. If you've seen me do this before in a couple of previous episodes, you know I've just trusted my tools, mostly Zeek. Seriously, mostly Zeek. Almost everything I've done before has been with Zeek, and probably you've seen that. It's good for flow data. It's good for transactional data, connection data. It's good for all those things. But in this case, suddenly, I don't have a single outbound SIN segment. No stimulus. No outbound stimulus because I expect that whatever Jake is doing for C2 is outbound connection. And I don't, I don't have any of that. All I've got is response packets. Why would I assume that Zeke can understand a connection if it never sees the scent? Pretty sad. Pretty sad. Yeah. Damn it. What do? Well, the subtext here, ironically, I was willing to take the gloves off to Aunt Jake and go full packet content, full stream reconstruction, anything I had to do to Aunt Jake. And one way or another, they all made sure I couldn't cheat that way because there's no way to reconstruct a TCP se uh, se uh, sequence if you only got segments in one direction. So no session reconstruction for me. Whoop. All right, well, it's okay, so I go adapt it. This is a copy of the slide from past years where I would say initial reconnaissance. What, what does stuff start and end? Where does it count? I don't care. 
because I know it's one hour and I know I'm looking for C2. I don't care about the rest. What protocols are involved? Clearly, I need to know that. And who is who, I still need to know. Drilling down on the anomalous behavior. I just need to know who is evil. I don't care who they're being evil to. I don't care if evil's trying to propagate. I don't care how, because it's not. It's just the C2 that I'm looking for. Whoops. I'm sorry. Timeline analysis also don't care. It's just any time in this hour do I see C2. So first sanity check. Of course, I'm going to run cap infos on my PCAP, make sure I understand the hour involved, that, yeah, it's sane, it's real. Then if you look at the bottom here, I'll highlight this stuff down at the bottom here. This TCP dump. So I'm saying if the ninth byte offset of the IP packet isn't 1 or 6 or 17, in other words, if the embedded protocol isn't TCP or UDP or is an ICMP or TCP or UDP in order, 1, 6, or 17, if it's not ICMP, TCP, or UDP, let me know if there's any packets because. Man, I don't trust Jake at all not to be clever, more clever than clever. He could have used a non-standard protocol, thinking he'd slide under my radar. But no, it's everything in the PCAP. Everything in the PCAP is either ICMP or TCP or UDP. Whoop, sanity check. So, first thing i got to figure, the most obvious thing is, well, if Jake's going to be, like, skiddy it, script kitty, skitty it, then he'd be headed outbound and post via HTTP. So, but but I don't I don't have any way to look at HTTP, HTTP traffic outbound looking for posts. So let's look at the inbound traffic for that hour. You, you, you'll you'll understand that I've converted my uh, my PCAP to something called 172.16 inbound PCAP, and I'm just doing strings on it, looking for 200 OK, looking for when a server responds with "Yep, I got a thing," and count how many lines. Crapple, man, that's too many. 27,000 server responses in an hour, but I should have expected that. So, knowing what I know about the use of posts for beacons, I should look for lots of small responses with regular timing, right? So, let's look for, okay, T-Shark, yay. T-Shark, with the same PCAP, looking for anywhere where the content length header is saying, I got less than 100 bytes for you. Because commonly, outbound beacons, phone home, phone home, hey mom, 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 every once in a while, mom says, yeah, I got something for you. But most commonly, mom says, 200 OK, 200 OK, I don't have anything for you, nothing, but 200 OK. So it's worth a look for looking for something coming from a web server to the client with almost no content at all. Because why would there be almost no content at all? So we look, ah, oh, striking only 29 times as a server said from the outside of the world down to Dale's Enterprise in that hour, only 29 times as a server said, I got nothing for you. I mean, 200 OK, probably, or maybe, but I got nothing for you. So we look. This is doable. I can look at 29 things. Even in a week, I can look at 29 things. So is Jake in the HTTP? Boom. So I say, T-Shark, look at that. Looking for anything, man. Well, what do we end up with? I got a bunch of 302, 302, 302, 302. A bunch of four, three, uh, 403 forbiddens. I looked at those. 
302 move, 302 move. The 302 moves are going to be probably benign. It'd be like if you went to HTTP, not HTTPS, but HTTP Google.com, you're going to get a 302 move to HTTPS. And I figure that's what probably most of those are. There's a bunch of forbiddens, and I don't know what that is, except, yeah, yeah, except I did, in fact, work through all of those like a dummy because sometimes I'm not so smart. I tried. I looked. I thought maybe Jake would be an HTTP, but he was not. So finally, here's here's what went down. There there are slides missing from this deck that I, that I will maybe include someday and put online because this this was me starting to dig. Then I dug more. Then I dug more. Then I dug more. And I dug and dug and dug in dirt and got all muddy. Because it, it, there, there was no obvious lead. I didn't trust that Zeke would have had any purchase on the problem. Because how would Zeke know a connection if it never sees an outbound sin, right? I mean, I think that's a reasonable assumption. So I was using TCP dump and VPF filters like you see here at the bottom of the page. Just nothing but VPF filters. I, I ran some crazy VPF filters. Hold on. Like... The one at the bottom, that's same. I did all sorts of crazy BPF stuff trying with TCP dump, and I finally got frustrated because I figured he's got to be someplace that I can see, you know? And even this, yeah. Well, so I finally decided, let's give Zeke a chance. Maybe, maybe Zeke knows more than I'm thinking. So you can see here, I created a Zeke directory, ran Zeke against the PCAP, and lo and behold, this. The con log. It figured out connections. So I asked it, man, really? Who's responding on what ports? On what responding ports? And that's, if, if you look at the command line, I'm catting out the con log to, to bro cut, now Z cut. Looking for the id.resp field, which if you know, if you know Zeke and the con log, that's the responding port, otherwise known as the destination port. And I sort it out, I uniqueify it with account, so the, the column that you see on the left hand is how many times that port was seen, and on the right hand is what port. So check that. Way tons of stuff on port 53. But that makes sense because it's UDP port 53, which isn't connection-based. So apparently Zeke can figure out that a DNS response is part of a connection that may have resulted from a DNS request and didn't see, but so it logs it as a connection. 443, that's trickier. Zeke sees an X.509 cert coming down on port 443, even though it never saw the SIN SYNAC act, it still recognizes that it sees a clear text X509 cert coming down on port 443. And port 80, well, 200 okay. So let's look, right? Zeke sees connections. Some of them it has to. DNS it has to because of what I just said. Sees inbound X.509 search, just like I said, even though it doesn't see the SIN SYNAC app. 
and the HTTP on the inbound. Wow, holy smokes, Zeke is so smart. Seth Hall, Fern Paxson, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Because now I can see. How about this? Ooh, ooh. Let's go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sorry. There we go. So you already saw that I looked for Jake in the HTTP and didn't find anything pay dirt. So is Jake in the DNS? Now, honestly, I don't think Jake would hide in the DNS. I had to look just out of completeness because I think Jake's too clever to hide in the DNS. Everybody hides in the DNS. If you're not looking at your DNS data, then all the, all, all the C2 is happening and you don't know. The absence of detection is not the absence of a breach. You should be looking at your DNS data. If you're not looking at your DNS data, let me back you up and say, look, you got to be looking at your DNS data. If you go to your DNS server administrator and ask them to start logging all their DNS requests and replies, they're going to throat punch you or at best tell you to go pack sand because they're not going to like the load on their DNS server to do that. But that's okay. All you got to do, slap a tap right in front of your inside DNS server and put security onion on it, slurping with Zeke, let Zeke take care of it. Here's Zeke taking care of it. Cat DNS log, bro cut query, grep via the query, gripping out anything that's ARPA or anything that starts with a dash. That's reverse lookups and anything that starts with a dash is no answer. And then we pipe it through SED. If you don't know SED, it's just a regular expression switcher that just does stream, uh, stream editing where we're saying everything that begins with A to Z lowercase or A to Z uppercase or 0 through 9 or a dash, any number of those up until a literal dot, squeeze those out so that we can sort out just the unique TLDRs. Oh, oh, did I say TLDR? Too long, didn't read. No, I'm sorry, FQDN and domain name. Anything but the host name. Let's get everything but the host name squeezed off and then uniqueify them and count them out and look at the unique ones. Now, if something like iodine or DNS cat or something's going on, you'd see a really spiky high number, but we're not seeing a really spiky high number. So apparently Jake's not doing some obvious thing with the ass. All right, but how about this? How about weirdness in the in the uh, X.509 certificates? Now, I got to give a major hat tip to Eric Conrad and Seth Meissner, faculty fellows at the Sands Institute, for tipping me off to some of this magic. But apparently Jake skipped it because here we go. I'm looking at the X.509 log. Like I said, Zeke consumed the X.509 certs, even though it didn't see Sin, Sinac, Act. It still consumed them. And so I look at nothing but the issuer field of the certificate. Now, mind you, lots of flailing around before this, before I got to this. But then all I'm doing is printing out the length of the cert, plus the, 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 the length of the, the issuer field plus the issuer field itself, sorting, counting on the length, sorting again, and tailing, and looking at the shortest issuer fields of the certs. And I'm pretty sure that this is base 64 encoding in, this, in the OU and O fields of the issuer field of the X.509. So I think I found Jake. Did I find Jake? Yeah, I found Jake. If you're looking here, cutting out the X.509 log, bro cutting out the issuer field, sorting, uniqueifying, grepping dash V, anything that has a canonical name, 
because apparently Jake forgot to include a canonical name in his issuer field, and so I got some base 64. If I echo out that base 64, it says run format C slash Y. That's the force switch. And that's not nice, Jake. But found, found. In any case, I'm coming up to the end of my 45 minutes. Here's my summary. You can find what you're looking for if you look. You can't find what you're looking for if you're not looking. I think that's, I think that's fairly canonical. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. The, uh, the, the quote in, uh, in Latin, I don't want to try to pronounce because I don't actually speak Latin. But in any case, a, uh, a, a monk in uh, the Netherlands, I think, famous for that one. Summary plus, I could not have pulled this off without an attacker, my nation state, woo, woo, attacker, willing to construct something never been seen before, bearing base 64 encoded commands in an X.509 cert. Lovely, clever, nice, and nobody better ever try that because now I know to look there too. Ha ha, I'll find you. But also Dale Hobbs, man, thanks for burying that traffic in an environment which Holy smokes, what a huge haystack that was. For, for the folks at the home listening to this, you can't, you can't imagine, but the, it, was, it was the most ginormous haystack I've ever had to sort through to find a nation state attacker doing C2 through fields and an X.509 cert in Bay 64. Wow. Also, though, huge thanks to to uh, the queen of all packets, Miss Judy Novak, and Dave Holzer, who's now the current uh, owner and operator of Sec 503 at Sands, from whom both both of from whom I've learned an incredible amount. And Eric Conrad and Seth Meisenar, thank you very much for the time I get to teach 511, which is all about threat hunting at Sands. All about threat hunting, just all about threat hunting. And learn a bunch from these guys, from these people. And so much thanks to them too. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to expand my window for any questions that roll in. If anyone has any, I'll, 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 I'll be standing here when I can and looking for any questions. There's a question from Sven. Uh, do you have a book? Do I have a book? Yeah, that's one. It's hard to see. Can you tell us what it is? I'm currently working on volume two of Network Forensics. I don't know when it's going to be done. I'm, I'm trying like hell, but I write really, really slowly. It, it, it's, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be out when it's out. Yeah. John, another question is, uh, what is the specs of your analysis machine? Yes. Yes. Like RAM and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I did all that analysis seriously with the latest version of Security Onion at the time, which was still like a 14.0 release, I, I, but on a, on a Lenovo ThinkPad Carbon or X1 Carbon with 16 gigs of RAM, and and a SSD. I mean, it's not a high-powered box. And the only reason why that was my platform is because I used to do all my analysis on a Mac PowerBook until my Mac PowerBook for my 2007 died. The, like, the motherboard died. Everything had been replaced with the motherboard and then just fried. And I was so frustrated when I looked at Mac prices and I didn't want to buy another one. And I was talking to Strand, and he's like, dude, why? He, he's like, I abandoned Apple. Why not go back to your roots? Just get a Linux box and go back to your roots. You'll be happier, man. Because I started with uh, Slackware Linux in the dot nine nine kernel days, like about a year after Linus released it in, in the, in the mid-90s. And, and... I told him, all right, I'm going to do that. And he's like, well, did you, did you pick a box? 
And I was like, no. He's like, well, what you need to get is an X1 carbon. And I was like, why are you so sure? He's like, remember when I fell and broke my ribs? I was like, yeah, you thought. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I fell on my X1 carbon. My ribs broke. It didn't. So that's what I'm running with just 16 gigs of RAM. It's a little light for a lot of VMs, but for processing, finding Jake, it worked just fine. Uh, Any other questions? Yeah, one more. What lab setup do you prefer for limited hardware labs? Do you see GNS3 providing the level of detail required in the capture? For my labs, I'm just... I'm just running VMs individually. I can I can manage with that Lenovo X1 Carbon. I can manage a couple of them with a small footprint, but that's that's pretty much it for for a lightweight lab setup. I mean, in in my office across town, which here I am in Missoula, I have an office across town. But I, I've I've got more hardware, but honestly. It, when when we're talking about like DNS stuff, I'm still just in the block all DNS over TLS, which you can do by port, uh, 853 block it. it. It doesn't belong on an enterprise network. It should be block, 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 make it die. It needs to die in a fire. DNS over HTTP, over HTTPS is harder because it's on port 443. For that, you kind of need to uh, reach out to your endpoints via GPOs and use the fact that GPOs can reconfigure Firefox and Edge and Chrome to not do that because DNS over HTTP, that's D-O-H, which is pronounced what? Go! Bad, bad news. If you can't, if you can't log all your HTTP, you've got a problem. That's why I'm saying biggest, biggest gain Make sure everything's running over port 53 and put a tap in front of your DNS server and put Zeke on the job and record everything in and out. I really actually half expected to find Jake in the DNS. That's that where to find everyone else. <laughs> John, that's it. Thank you so much. No worries. We have the Discord channel, so John, if you're not in there, just let me know if you get a chance to join. There might be some more questions that people have and they want to interact with you later on. Uh, no worries, I'll try and find my way there.